But we have Roger Stone on the line now. We'll get back into the news. Roger, uh, you need no introduction. Of course, you've been on several times before. You wanted to pop in with an update, so you've got the floor. Tell us the latest. Thank you. That's very kind. I uh, was on my way uh, to lunch. First of all, let me apologize for wearing a button-down shirt with a vested suit. I understand it, it isn't done. However, uh, when I checked from the laundry, it was the only clean white shirt I had. Anyway, I'm delighted to be with you uh, because I think the events in today's Trump campaign uh, need to be explained. Uh, in essence here, Paul Manafort became concerned that the unfounded and baseless attacks on him which were uh, orchestrated by Sidney Blumenthal, the dirty trickster and hitman who works for Hillary, uh, paid for by Viktor Pinchuk, the Ukrainian billionaire who purchased the Ukrainian coup from the Clintons for a $10 million uh, contribution to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, and these hoped up baseless stories in which we have a ledger uh, alleging Manafort took uh, payments for which there is no financial trail or record, evidence that would never stand up in court, a story uh, that, uh, in the New York Times that admits that he is not accused of any wrongdoing, that no government official has accused him of wrongdoing. Manafort has not worked for the government of Ukraine or Russia. He worked for a democratic political party through two difficult parliamentary elections, and a presidential election. Paul, you try electing a guy named Kauzanowski uh, to the Ukrainian parliament in a district that has more cows than people. Uh, his payments were legal, and there's no evidence of wrongdoing. But uh, we know that, uh, that Sidney Blumenthal, the hitman who works for Hillary, has had a phalanx of investigators all over Kiev and Moscow trying to dig dirt up on Manafort. This is the most they could find. There is no there there. In fact, I would suggest to you that this alleged uh, ledger that shows payments to him may be the product of Ukrainian intelligence controlled by the billionaire Pinchuk. So uh, Manafort, being a professional and recognizing that the mainstream media is not going to be objective about this, and also recognizing that this controversy feeds the false theme of Trump, Putin, Russia, Manafort, which is modern-day McCarthyism, because Trump is not for war, before, because he's for detente with the Russians and hard-headed negotiations that would allow us to work together to eradicate ISIS, we question his patriotism. The Clinton people saying that Manafort and Trump are in league with Putin says they're working against the interests of their country. It's treasonous. It's false. It has no basis in fact. But this entire narrative about Manafort and the Ukraine is spun by the Clinton thugs was a distraction. So Manafort, being a professional uh, and having left the campaign in structurally better shape, with a research operation, a field operation, a state operation, uh, uh, and so on, uh, decides to step aside in the best interest of the Trump campaign. Let me point out, Manafort never was paid a penny. The allegations that Corey Lewandowski is out trying to peddle that there was some kind of uh, financial impropriety on Manafort's part are actionable, uh, if anybody chooses to write that. Uh, but he did what the, a political pro would do, step aside, but not before he understood this news cycle uh, and helped install uh, the bomb-throwing firebrand and friend of mine, uh, and now friend of Manafort's, Stephen K. Bannon, uh, and Kelly Conway, who I, I think is great and, uh, and have a lot of confidence in. So um, that's what really transpired here. This is a selfless act on Manafort's part. It's what, and I hate that this is a filibuster, Paul, but it's what Corey Lewandowski should have done when he was accused of manhandling a reporter in the interests of Donald Trump in the campaign. Mr. Lewandowski may say, well, I was innocent, but Manafort is also innocent. 
although there's more evidence in Corey's case. So that's what's really transpiring here. The Ukrainian government of Pinchuk may be trying to purchase an election. They would like to disqualify Donald Trump. So yes, there's internal Ukrainian politics here, uh, but this fellow, working through his U.S. agents, uh, purchased uh, the, the coup that toppled a Democratic elected president in Ukraine. He gave so much to the Clintons. I believe in that year, he moved ahead of the Saudis and perhaps the Chinese. That's the backstory that those who are watching us today need to know. So we got the media again obsessing, Roger, about you know Russia interfering in the U.S. election, when this could be a, an example of that very thing, but a concrete effort by the government of Ukraine to do that very same thing. On the flip well, side, we've got the Clinton. Go ahead. Yes, and at the same time, the mainstream media, including the New York Times, choose to ignore the overseas adventures of the Podesta brothers, who have illicitly profited uh, from all these foreign governments uh, uh, at the uh, based on their Clinton connections. Podesta throws out some emails where he and Manafort have a small piece of, of business together, violating the confidence of his client and also getting the reporter to clean up the story a little bit uh, in terms of his involvement. Uh, but more about Mr. Podesta uh, and Mr. Blumenthal soon. Let, let me remind your listeners, Sidney Blumenthal is the man who we now know indisputably made up the false claim that the attack on our brave men in Benghazi was caused by a, an anti-Islamic video. That's a lie invented by uh, Sidney Blumenthal confirmed by his emails, is found by the U.S. Congress. Uh, it is uh, born of his son, Max, a, a Jew-hating, Israel-hating radical, like Blumenthal himself. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, this is a guy, Sidney Blumenthal, who, who thinks he's Ted Sorensen, but in fact, he's Al Capone. This guy will do anything legal or illegal. As we also know from the emails, he was urging Hillary to topple Gaddafi not disclosing that he himself would make millions out of that based on some side dealings. Now, Roger, we've got Hillary Clinton basically has more skeletons in her closet than a crypt. The New York Times is not interested in digging up the dirt. The Washington Post isn't interested. It's all about Manafort. It's all about Trump. We've got pay for play with the Clinton Foundation. You were talking about, I believe, yesterday, these WikiLeaks email releases, which Assange promised weeks ago. You're saying that this could be the October surprise for Hillary Clinton. What do you think is going to be in those emails when they are leaked? Well, but who knows? Uh, I believe, based on uh, my sources of information, that Mr. Assange, who I regard as a hero uh, and someone who's been fighting the deep state, both Republican and Democrat, all neocons, all for war, all globalists, uh, he has uh, uh, released the first DNC documents to cataclysmic effect. But I would point out again that they were first hacked by Crucifer II, who is not in the employ of the Russians. Uh, when he put them out, they got no traction. They got no coverage. He took them uh, to WikiLeaks. They confirmed their authenticity, and they re-released him. No Russians. The whole idea that this was done by the Russians is a false narrative by the New McCarthyites, uh, you know, in the Clinton camp. Uh, it is, uh, It is therefore, I think, Im important to recognize that the mainstream media, particularly the New York Times, is in possession of evidence of extraordinary corruption at the Clinton Foundation, things that have happened since Peter Schweitzer wrote his epic book, Clinton Cash, so ongoing criminal conspiracies, uh, and uh, the, the media isn't interested in that. But Mr. Assange, I think, has the goods. We don't know. It could be Benghazi. It could be. It could be uh, the Clinton Foundation. It could be uh, uh, their their their, uh, their speeches, their paid speeches, which I think we both know are thinly described bribes. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton announcing that if Hillary's elected, the Clinton Foundation will no longer take contributions from foreign nationals. That's like the uh, closing the barn door after the horse has escaped. The Clintons are crony capitalists. Progressives have figured out they're not progressives. They're globalists. They're neocons, but they're not progressives. Uh, and the way they gave it to Bernie Sanders without the Vaseline uh, was true in Mr. Assange's first data dump. Now, uh, those on the 
left call us conspiracy theorists when we say that. That's a catch-all that's, that's supposed to discredit you. But I submit the idea that Donald Trump and Paul Manafort are traitors to their own country and loyal to Vladimir Putin, accusing them of treason. Now, there is a conspiracy theory. That's the greatest stretch I've ever heard. As far as I'm concerned, I am a lifelong anti-communist. I happen to know that Vladimir Putin doesn't like Paul Manafort, in fact, dislikes him, because Manafort pressed his client, Yanukovych, to join the European Union over the objection of the Russians. Now, final couple of minutes in this segment, Roger. Uh, we had the big Trump speech yesterday. The media is kind of spinning the narrative that this was a, a huge apology. Um, what concerns me about it is you have Repo establishment Republicans praising Trump, the same people that have, you know, lost the last two elections, for adopting this kind of conciliatory tone in this speech yesterday. Do you think this was a deliberate pivot by Trump, or is the speech being mischaracterized by the media? Uh, mischaracterized. I wish they would focus on the content of the speech. Uh, Trump essentially asserted that he is a leader, that he is committed to a reform agenda, that he is unafraid to take on the two-party duopoly, including those in his own party he disagrees with. Uh, this was the best speech I have heard him give in this election cycle. It was very uh, uh, well delivered, uh, and I think the, the words were more significant. Uh, this hyper analysis of anything that happens in the Trump campaign doesn't happen in the Clinton campaign. The fact that she uh, campaigns for a day and then disappears for sight, and then campaigns for a day and disappears from sight because she doesn't have the stamina to stay on her feet for a campaign event and that she can't do a press conference because she is incapable of, uh, I think, both physically incapable of taking the rigors, nor does she have good answers. When, when I see Joel Berenson uh, on MSNBC saying these questions uh, are beneath contempt and they don't rise to an answer. No, Joel, they do. Your candidate needs to help going up a, a flight of stairs. She is on video having seizures. She is wearing glasses that doctors tell us are related to brain injury. She had a traveling physician with her at all times, and he clearly had an injection at the ready. Sorry, Joel, legitimate questions. Your candidate is old and tired. She does not have the stamina uh, or the health to be president of the United States. Okay, we'll leave it there. Roger Stone, stonezone.com. Be sure to have you back on the show with more updates about the Trump campaign.